Hello YouTube friends. A lot of you have become and developed personal relationships with you and we, we simply love you to bits. We love you and we're very thankful and we're thankful for all the folks that uh, watch and encourage and uh, really act as a good fan and motivator uh, for Joe and uh, help him. We appreciate it. I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, want to talk about this awful, awful uh, how it got to this point. I know, but I'm going to use the expression, I'll never know. With this unified belt and all this junk and all this mess here. Um, Tyson Fury on the other side of that line with the WBC belt. And I don't know about the lineal championship. I believe he sent the lineal belt back to him. I have no idea why you would do that when it's a damn magazine uh, or media publication that does that. So, and I don't even know how a damn magazine can decide who the lineal champion is anyway. But it's boxing and there's a lot of fishy things and a lot of crazy mess that goes on with boxing. thing I was going to say quickly about Fury, uh, that fight should have been signed. We, we should have a uh, undisputed, undisputed world champion right now. Make no mistakes about it, it would have been Tyson Fury. I think anyone with any common sense and any boxing knowledge should come to that same conclusion. Uh, unless they are letting emotional things get in their way. Uh, their love for Usyk or something like that. All right. With the Usyk fight, uh, I put up a video I held two fingers up to my belly button, and why did I do that? Uh, nobody's even disputed that I did that, but if you go, if you put the index finger in your belly button and stick your middle finger here, and my hands are not terribly huge, so this would be about the length with the belly button. Uh, where from here down, they'd cast the low blow um, in my day, or, or they would set it. I mean, uh, it's a little different today. I don't know, and you know, there's a lot of people putting videos out, but I'm telling you truth here from organization to organization, they got pretty much the same rules and from state to state, same way. I mean, you got three knockdown rules over here on this side of the country or over there in the other country. Uh, and in some states over there, you don't have three knockdown rules. And in some countries over there, they don't have them either. Uh, that's all I do know. But what I do know is that wasn't a low blow. And what I do know is uh, folks like the boxing scholar, uh, he put out uh, something very interesting in just a video short uh, showing that what happened on this last fight wasn't the first time it happened and the first time that Usyk got a big good rest after getting belted really, really hard. Uh, 
So, and I want to say one other thing. Uh, I'm going to hop off that, but some, you know, I hope somebody does an in depth on that. And let's go back and let's see professionally, even in the cruiserweight division, how many times he had been low blowed uh, uh, with legitimate low blows, questionable low blows, and supposed low blows that were not low blows. And we need to look at that because there's always a pattern uh, when the fix is in. There's always a pattern when the when the referee's favoring one guy over another. And there's always an A fighter and a B fighter. And in the UFC, you don't get that. The UFC promotes both fighters. They may have their great champion here, and that may be the ticket seller. But the thing is, it's all in-house. And if the other guy defeats the big-name guy, that guy becomes the big-name guy. And they still have a draw. I, when, when I say a draw, I mean a draw of people coming in. Uh, so it's just the unified belt holder, whoever it is, whoever gets it, there needs to be a unification. Let, let me, we've got to have a, uni, a, a total undisputed unification of all the belts. And here's why. Uh, we have no great fighter in the heavyweight division right now. Uh, the greatest one that we do have, which is not great, but whom I like uh, and whom it is excellent, uh, but he's not a great fighter. And is Tyson Fury. And uh, I don't want to see uh, people fighting for second place constantly. I, I, me, I don't want to see Deontay Wilder uh, fighting Usyk. Uh, it's a, it's a, if they fight, yeah, I'd like to see the fight, but I'm not concerned with anybody right now that's holding the other belts other than the WBC belt. Um, as a cha- and, and considering anyone else other than Tyson Fury the champion. It's just not possible with me. And we have a trail there. Uh, Tyson won uh, the unified belts uh, from Kluchko, uh, Tyson gave them up, Joshua got them, and now Usyk has them. There are no real champions sitting over there. It's a bunch of junk. and People should quit paying to see that junk. If we quit paying to see the junk part of the sport, uh, in other words, what we re- people should pay to see the fights, but the big boy fight, the, the big money maker sh- right now should be whoever Tyson Fury is fighting. And Tyson Fury should just go all out, do what's necessary, and gobble up every belt and allow the boxing heavyweight division to move forward. Uh, period. I hope that comes off understandable. I hope I got my point across as to what I mean. And the next thing, probably towards the middle or the end of next week, we should have uh, a professional, former national champion uh, come in and do a hard ass full on with Joe. So, uh, there's going to be about a 10 or 15 pound weight difference, probably uh, 15 to 20 pound weight difference in Joe's favor on this. But you got to consider, guys, uh, 
when he's just just turned 15 years old. So we're going to see what happens. Whatever happens, it'll be put. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to put it online, uh, and we'll just have to see what happens. What I think is going to happen is uh, what's happened to everybody else. Uh, period. Um, I think Joe's going to run the guy down and blast him till he quits. Uh, you know, we got a long, you know, history usually repeats itself, so we'll see. But this is the biggest test that will be going on with Joe. Uh, this gentleman is, uh, he went back to his home country and won a, a national belt over there for the country. And he's back over here now in Colombia. And this guy has worked with Joe before. Uh, of course, when Joe had just turned 13. So, uh, but he, lo he, he loves Joe a whole lot. He really likes Joe. He saw what I saw in the beginning that, damn, this kid's something else, boy. Do not stop doing this. So, uh, we continue to do it. And the I want to tell you an interesting story. Uh, if you go look up Jerry Quarry, he was a heavyweight contender, very famous uh, boxer back in the 1970s. Uh, all, the, all his brothers were fighters as well. And uh, this guy fought Muhammad Ali. I believe twice he fought Floyd Patterson twice. Uh, the real deal, you know, didn't win the whole enchilada, but a great, great boxer and very famous boxer. He fought Joe Frazier. Uh, so anyway, uh, Jerry passed away some years ago. Uh, God rest his soul. And, uh, but one of his little brothers, Bobby, uh, messages Joe back and forth online. And he told me and Joe in the beginning, but this was just worded specifically to Joe out of, out of my presence. He said, you need to do it because you love it, not because your dad loves it, not because you know, your aunt over here, your uncle over here loves it. And the only thing you need to really prove in it is to yourself. You don't have to prove another thing to another fella. And he said, remember, uh, when you get ready to stop, just stop. That's your decision. There should be no guilt involved in that decision or anything like that. And it was a little more in depth than that, but I'm breaking it down. And we appreciated that. And I specifically appreciated that. And I, I want to reiterate with all of you guys, Joe does this not because he has to. He does it because he loves it. Uh, Joe is an excellent, excellent student. So I wanted to bring that up. Now, in all the chaos and confusion that's been going on here in Columbia and the BS from MFers, Pertner on a constant basis, uh, We seem to be getting a little bit of resolve where we're at. Uh, I met with some of the powers that be, and I sat down and said, this is going to move in a bad direction. I'm finished. Said, what do you mean you're finished? I said, it's not very necessary that I, that I understand and comprehend what I mean by that, but it's very necessary that you folks do it. I said, this is detrimental to your well-being, period. And I said, think about your well-being and the worst things that can happen. And remember, I, I'm telling you, your well-being depends upon it. I'm finished. So we were ordered to take the stuff, the boxing equipment out of the gym. Let me tell you where the boxing equipment is. Is still sitting inside the gym. 
and that's where it's going to continue to be. They were threatening me with sanctions, legal actions, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I moved into this neighborhood because of the the big area that I had for Joe. Uh, we like going to the gym, going to other gyms, uh, but. This place right here was specifically chosen because of the gym that's here, and uh, that's why we're here. So, without getting into it, and a lot of you won't know what I'm talking about, but we've had some problems here in this gated community that we live in, and it kind of came to a head a couple of nights ago, and I went, and it was big to sit down. And, you know, I'm saying, well, this happened, that happened, this other thing. And I said, no, let's just stop with this bull hockey right now. I'm tired of talking. I, I'm tired. I'm not going to convince anybody of anything. This stops now. And it'll go where you want it to go. It'll go where I want it to go if you continue. It won't go where you want it to go. It won't make it to the court. It won't, won't make it to the this. It won't make it to the other thing that you, the plans that you've secretly woven amongst yourselves inside your head it ain't going to work that way. And, and I'll tell you all, all quickly, we had an incident with a guard out here uh, that just kept magnifying and uh, uh, had a snowball effect to it. And... Uh, that's what created the mess. So uh, we had some equipment vandalized by some younger kids in the neighborhood that don't know how to act. Uh, Joe himself has solved that and let the kids know he's the big man on campus. He's the bully, and he's not over 18, so he can handle it himself. And I've expressed to the adults about the same thing as an adult with me concerning. So I believe everything was constructive. Uh, people in general uh, had say I'm very unique because Joe and I sat in there, but see Joe lives like, like I do uh, under the principles that I do. Joe understands that I've, I've worked hard during my life and I that's why I'm afforded the ability to say just this to anybody. You may have a set of rules that you have. A, I will follow the rules, right? There may be a system of laws set up. I will follow the laws. But make no mistake about it, folks. Nobody tells me what to do. Nobody. Now, really listen hard to what I'm saying. No body tells me what to do. It's as simple as that. And since I informed these people this and informed them, I didn't really give a, a hoot about whatever they did. You know, cord. The other thing, this, suing me. Uh, and then inform them what my intentions would be. So far, everything has stopped. So it's been pleasant around here. I'm very thankful to the one that I do try to do what he tells me to do. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Son of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are one. They make no mistake about it. I'm an old man and nobody tells me what to do. And it's just as simple as that. Uh, for all you gym owners, because we really got a lot of gym owners and boxing professionals and uh, even a lot of champions that watch us and for some reason think I'm kind of a good guy. Uh, and I appreciate that, and I love you. Uh, uh, 
So this is why I mention it in athletic or gym terms. If I were to ever to walk in your gym, I would do exactly what your rules were. Uh, just no problem with that. If you ask me, hey, Jim, will you come over here and help me with this? Damn straight, I'll do it. It's nothing more than helping somebody. I love nothing more than that. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel better than the person that maybe I help. And, you know, they're asking me to do something for them. So I'm real receptive that way. But folks, listen to me. I'm old. You know, if I come into your gym and you start bossing me, I'll tell you in front of the group of your guys, be careful with me. You can kick me out of there. You got the right to do that. And if you just, you don't even have to kick me, really. You just say, will you leave? And I'll leave. Uh, that I'll do. But uh, I don't have a boss. And therefore, I'm not going to put up with no bullshit out of no man sitting around trying to show authority over me or buckle up uh, and pride around me because I will chop the ass down just as quick as the chest starts expanding. I'm old. I have no, no room and what time I have left for BS like that. And, uh, Joe will do what some people tell him to do. For example, he does what I tell him to do. Uh, for example, if he goes into the U.S. Naval Academy and he comes out, and, uh, maybe he works his way up to Rear Admiral, he's going to do what, what his superiors tell him to do, right? This is going to be as simple as that. The only way he would be derelict in duty is if it, went against the freedom of the people that he is sore to protect. You know, uh, which he should do because the, fir the first thing is uh, God and the, uh, and the supreme laws of the land, not the, God, not the laws that a man or orders a man would put up with him. Uh, we were taught all this years ago, uh, there was, uh, there was a lot of good things that, you know, I got an uncle, he's a full bird colonel, uh, Zen three wars, no joke guy. Uh, you know, my dad died when I just turned 11 and he did a lot in the molding of who I am, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly of that. He had a lot to do with and, uh, there ain't but so much shit we take around here. And we always stand up and uh, we don't take the easy roads. And we are always, I, I'm going to tell you something here too. This is just in general, but it should be to athletes, especially boxers today, athletically, but it goes to everybody. You need to be looking for evil. You need to be looking for cheaters. Your eyes need to be open. You don't need to have no blinders on. You need a good peripheral vision, and you need to know what in the hell's going on around you at all times. Whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're in the gym, or whether you're in a big auditorium or coliseum getting ready for a fight, a prize fight. You need to be looking. And uh, uh, there's a you get people to look for you. I do too. But the big responsibility is... Uh, looking at even those that you delegate to. And uh, so people aren't doing that today. Uh, it seems to not be a good thing to question. And I'm going to tell all you people something right now. Uh, whether it's a good thing to question or not, needs to be slung the hell out the door. It is the right time to be questioning. It, it is the supreme moment in world history to be looking at what the hell is going on around you everywhere. Because from your neighborhood uh, to out and about in the little town or big city that you live in, 
to the city government, to the state government, to the national government, to the uh, the to the United Nations bullshit. Uh, we need to be looking. If you've not seen on the television or online everything that's been crazy, crazy that's going on around you, uh, it, uh, to bring it back to boxing terms, every other boxing match you see, or, or maybe one out of the three big ones that you see uh, here in the past eight years is something finagling going on to it. Uh, one-sidedness going to one guy showing favoritism to another. And I remind the hell out of every single one of you, every single one of you, if the heavyweight champion comes to your house to eat, partake in a meal with you, you should treat that man no different than the guy that comes to pick your trash up. It's called favoritism. And no one is thinking about this today. And that goes on in boxing constantly, constantly. Uh, these judges will sell out for a meal. Uh, and the referees will too. And uh, what they all don't realize is, is if 30% of them or 20% of them stood up and fought that evil, this mess would stop. Boxing would be different. And if only 30% of the people would that are working inside now, inside of it, would just separate from it and point at it and expose it in the boxing community, boxing would change. And the same thing in, in the world out here. Same thing in your neighborhood if you're dealing with a HOA, the side of control, the homeowners association going gone wild. Uh, stand the hell up, you know. Uh, so, with the little issue I just had, I finally took enough of it. We're, you know, we're inside the gate, and I informed everybody. I said, be careful what you do on the inside of this gate, because your, your little rules and your bullshit and your favoritism and your little illegal actions ain't going to work with me on the outside of the gate. And think about that very thoroughly. Um, may, maybe I start treating you on the outside of the gate or get back at you on the outside of the gate. And folks, when people will even go to the toughest UFC, jiu-jitsu, great boxer, great wrestling package, the whole nine yards, the deadliest men in the world. When you got pencil neck geeks that'll come up and intimidate and pull those people down, they'll stop at nothing. They're narcissistic. They're antisocial and all that. All those terms put together. Uh, it just act right. You know, I said the other day, the people acting right. I was like, you know, I named off a couple of individuals and I said, I can't believe they show their face in this neighborhood. It's just unbelievable to me that they'd have the audacity to do the, the wrong things that they do and then walk out proud uh, in front of all their neighbors that hate them. And uh, there's no cooth no more in this world, so just... Protect yourself. I know I've rambled long enough. I want everybody to know I love you. I want my Christian brothers and sisters. I hope God blesses you in every good way that he deems is good for you. And uh, prayers to you all. And I hope everybody has a good midweek and much love.